Good morning, everybody. Well, today was supposed to be the day that my realtor was going to come with all the paperwork and me sign it to get my house listed for sale, but she's not coming. Not today. We got thunderstorms on the way here. Supposed to be here any minute. Supposed to have been here at 9 o'clock. So they're late. But I heard thunder a while ago, and I saw lightning out the living room window earlier, so I guess it really is headed here. Anyway, she she lives over one hour away, and that's driving down the interstate highway uh, within 40 minutes of me, so she's got, I guess around 20 or 25 minutes on the interstate and then another 40 minutes from the interstate to me and I told her not to come because we got to take pictures inside and outside and I just told her not to come today and so she's rescheduled for Tuesday next week so I got a I got the house looking clean and pretty I just got to keep it that way <laughs> It, it wasn't bad, but there was so much dust. This place is so dusty in it. There was dust everywhere. I mean, everywhere. But I got most of it out. I need to do the uh, tile floors again. I've done them twice already, but they were so dusty. It was almost like rubbing sandpaper when I was mopping. But I got most of it up but I think I need to do it one more time so that's that and it is cold here for people I am freezing my rear end off I, I went outside I took the tripod and the camera and the Bible and everything outside and I got it all set up and I was shivering so hard I couldn't have talked so I brought it all back inside and here we go we're going to Read the Bible together some more, y'all. Still in 1 Samuel, and y'all, well, I'll take my hat off. My bald head gets really cold, but I can stand it for a few minutes. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 22. <clears throat> David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave at Adullam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And every one that was in distress, and every one that was in debt, and every one that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and they were with him about 400 men, 400 people that was in distress and debt, and discontented and I would have been with them <laughs> I'm not in debt but I'm in distress and I'm discontented but God's taking care of that for me and David went thence to Mizpah of Moab and he said unto the king of Moab let my father and my mother I pray thee come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me and he brought them before the king of Moab and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in a hole in the hold I don't know what in the hold means and the prophet Gad said unto David abide not in the hold depart and get thee into the land of Judah. Then David departed and came to the forest of Harath. When Saul heard that David was discovered and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. Then Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites, 
Will the son of Jesse give every one of you? The son of Jesse is David, in case you all forgot. And Saul wants David dead. Hear now, Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me, and there is none that showeth me that my son hath made a league with the son of Jesse, and there is none of you that is sorry for me, or showeth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. And Saul's son was Jonathan, remember? And Jonathan likes David and is pro-David. And if they voted back in those days, he, Saul's son, Jonathan, would have voted for David to be king. But God made him king anyway. Then angered, I mean, then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, I saw that the son of Jesse, which is David, coming to Nob, to Abimelech, the son of Ahitub. And he inquired of the Lord for him, and gave him victuals, and gave him the sword of Goliath the Philistine. David killed Goliath, remember? And David is a young guy. He's By now he's probably in his teens, maybe. Maybe not even that old. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came, all of them, to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, Here I am, my lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me? Thou, the son of Jesse, in that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day. Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David? which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me, let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And the king said, Thou shalt surely die. Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. And the king said unto the footman that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David. And because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. This Saul dude's got some serious hate problems. And Saul is the brother of Jesse. So Jonathan and David are cousins. David is Saul's nephew and Saul wants David dead. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. And the king said to Doeg, Turn now and fall upon the priests. And Doeg, the Edomite, turned, and he fell upon the priests and slew on that day fourscore and five persons. That's 85 people that did wear a linen ephod. And Nob, the city of the priests, 
smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of, H of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. And David said <clears throat> unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there, that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not. He that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Chapter 23 Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Keilah, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go and smite these Philistines? And the Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. And David's men said unto him, Behold, we be afraid here in Judah, how much more than if we come to Keilah against the armies of the Philistines. Then David inquired of the Lord yet again, and the Lord answered him and said, Arise and go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So, God has David's back. David will be victorious because of God. So David and his men went to Kela and fought with the Philistines and brought away their cattle and smote them with a great slaughter. So David saved the inhabitants of Kela. And it came to pass when Abiathar the son of Ahimelech fled to David to Keilah, that he came down with an ephod in his hand. And it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah, and Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah, to besiege David and his men. And David knew that Saul secret, secretly practiced mischief against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring hither the ephod. Then, David's, then said David, O Lord God of Israel, thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. Then say, said David, Will the men of Keilah deliver me and my men into the hand of Saul, and the Lord said, They will deliver thee up. Looks like the end of the road for David, y'all. But we still got some more stuff to read here. <coughs> Then David and his men, which were about six hundred, arose and departed out of Keilah and went whithersoever they could go. And it was told Saul that David was escaped from Keilah, and he forbore to go forth. And David abode in the wilderness in strongholds and remained in a mountain in the wilderness of Ziph. 
And Saul sought him every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. And David saw that Saul was come out to seek his life, and David was in the wilderness of Ziph in a wood. And Jonathan, Saul's son, David's cousin, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand and God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find thee. And thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul my father knoweth. And they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. Then came up the Ziphites to Saul to Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds in the woods? in the hill of Hachilah, which is on the south of Jeshimon. Now therefore, O king, come, come down according to all the desire of thy soul to come down, and our port shall be to deliver him into the king's hand. And Saul said, Blessed be ye of the Lord, for ye have compassion on me. Go, I pray you, Prepare yet, and know, and see his place, where his haunt is, and who hath seen him there. For it is told me that he dealeth very subtly. See therefore, and take knowledge of all the lurking places where he hideth himself, and come ye again to me with the certainty, and I will go with you, and it shall come to pass if he be in the land, that I will search him out throughout all the thousands of Judah. And they arose and went to Ziph before Saul, but David and his men were in the wilderness of Maon, in the place on the south of Jeshimon. Saul also and his men went to seek him, and they told David wherefore he came down into a rock and abode and the wilderness of Maon. And when Saul heard that, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Maon. And Saul went on this side of the mountain, and David and his men on that side of the mountain. And David made haste to get away for fear of Saul. For Saul and his men compassed David and his men round about to take them. But there came a messenger unto Saul, saying, Haste thee, and come, for the Philistines have invaded the land. Wherefore Saul returned from pursuing after David, and went against the Philistines. Therefore they call that place Selah Ham Hamalekath. Hamalekath. Yeah, something like that. And David went up from thence and dwelt in the strongholds at En Gedi. Uh, I'm going to read one more chapter. Chapter 24. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats by the way, and there was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men returned, I mean remained, in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily.
And he said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. This is some good stuff, y'all. I get to reading this, and I don't want to stop. So David stayed his servants with these words, and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave and cried after Saul, saying, My Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. And David said to Saul, Wherefore hearest thou men's words, saying, Behold, David seeketh thy hurt. Behold, this day thine eyes have seen how that the Lord had delivered thee today into mine hand in the cave, and some bade me kill thee, but mine eyes spared thee. And I said, I will not put forth my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. Moreover, my father, see ye the Yea, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand, for in that I cut off the skirt of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand, and I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. The Lord judge between me and thee, and the Lord avenge me of thee, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. And as saith the proverb of the ancients, wickedness proceedeth from the wicked, but mine hand shall not be upon thee. After whom is the king of Israel come out, and whom dost thou pursue? After a dead dog? After a flea, the Lord therefore be judge and judge between me and thee and see and plead my cause and deliver me out of thine hand. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul said, lifting up his voice, and wept. And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast re rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. And thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me, for as much as when the Lord had delivered me into thine hand, thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Swear now therefore unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, and that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swore unto Saul, and Saul went home. But David and his men get them up unto the hold. That's some good stuff, y'all. I tell you what. You ever want to get your heart pumping and your mind happy? Just pick up God's holy word and read it. It is exciting seeing how the Lord works out everything. Mm -mm -mm. And all the stuff in my life he's working out too. And in your life. Just put your faith in him. Stop trying to do it all yourself. Trust God. Let him work out his plans for you 
and your life, and everything's going to be honky-dory. All right, y'all. That's it. Talk to y'all later.